What's going on, Shrew Gang? My name is Camden Herp. We're having a great day. In today's video, I'm doing an update on BlackBerry, ticker symbol BB. We're looking at the intraday chart right now. I'll bring it into a wider view of things while we also pay attention to the flow of the calls and puts and so we can get behind the scenes of what these slimy, oh, grimy short sellers are doing in the float of BlackBerry. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get right on into it. So we were just in this little triangle formation. We have this resistance up at around this range at 1048. We have this ascending support going from 1026 all the way to 1048. So we had to pop one way or another when we were pinched in between this little triangle. And you can see that way was up filling in that gap fill in that one minute chart as well so without any further ado don't pay attention too much to the gaps because some people say it's speculation as in they always get filled some people say it's speculation as in they don't always get filled just know that it's speculation and you shouldn't base any trade whatsoever off of that with us still in this massive falling wedge after we got a falling wedge rip falling wedge waiting for that other rip uh, we got that rip a couple days ago but it just basically tested that long-term resistance and fell right back down now i understand my falling wedges have been different almost every single video but i want you to understand that i'm trying to stray away from using a bunch of lines on my charts and i'm trying to bring these trend channels back so you can get a general image of where your stock is going next falling wedge rip 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 waiting for that next leg up so what's this general price point we have to break over in the intraday or just in particular to break above this falling wedge this massive falling wedge it's gonna be right here around 1065 1070 if you will that's going to be our descending resistance with us breaking out of 1048 seeing some more green activity to retest this intraday high at around 1055 you can see that the buy orders are just over dominating the sell orders as of right now in this one minute this could definitely change in a second but what we need to see is a clean break above this this range being used as support rather than a resistance another run back up to retest this high a break above that you can start using that as a support rather than a resistance and then a run back up to retest some of these last highs as well so ultimatum resistance as of for these past couple of days is going to be around here at 1085 1075 as well we just want to be back up in this little trading range using the 1085 as resistance 1075 as support because if that ends up happening in the longer term view of things we are also going to be getting a clean slice and dice breakout over this falling wedge and retesting this last high that's all we generally need to do as you can see we're in a massive falling wedge formation retested 1029 twice now looking like if we get a break above this neckline at 1085 we could be pushing up to 12 dollars once again it's that simple my friends we tested the bears conviction with this massive rip they tested our conviction right back with this massive rundown now it's time to stick it to the man again and it's time for us to get back into this bullish trend so that's what i have planned out ahead i don't really see us continuing to fall and die deeper down under 10 20 10 25 if you will i just see us bouncing here at 10 25 i see us holding this range up here as support and retesting some of these last highs over this past couple of weeks or so without any further ado though we went over the intraday chart the longer term view of things let's just go ahead and break it down charlie brown into this flow of the calls and puts. So as you can see, max pain for this week alone is already this $10 strike. It's in the money, so uh, it's probably going to stay in the money unless we fall under $10, but I don't really see that happening. We're already above $10.50 as of right now. We need to start using this as support so we can see some more green days ahead. Guess what? Our max pain out of the money this week is going to be this $15 strike. We have some loaded up around $17,000 in open interest at $12. We have another $13,000 open interest at around $11. There's still a lot more contracts picked up today as well for some of these strike prices, but the max pain this week for the call options, my friends, is 15 freaking dollars, man. $15. So this is our max pain if they want to do anything that they possibly can to bring us under $15 by the end of this week then they're going to do just that but we should be ecstatic as bulls that our max pain is at a higher price around that $15 range because for the past three almost four weeks now they've closed us in between the max pain for calls and the max pain for puts so if they're going to keep us under $15 we could see some major rips this week maybe not past 15 but I'd be fine if we capped out at around there before we start seeing some consolidation for another leg up you get what I'm trying to say but this is what's playing out as of right now in the options market max pain for calls $15 max pain for puts as of right Right now is going to be this $10 strike. So they're doing whatever they can to keep us above $10 and keep us below 15. I would love to be closer to 15 towards the end of the week on Friday, but understand if we just rip to the moon to around $15 in the middle of the week, you probably are going to get some more red towards the end of the week to IV crush the calls and to get the puts that have already been IV crushed deeper into the money. Without any further ado, and if you're following me, let's just bring over this Ortex data real quick to get behind the scenes for these short sellers. With us today at 33.5 million shares on loan, 14.5% utilization, 
and jack squat and the short interest percentage change barely any more returned than borrowed you can see that nothing has pretty much changed since friday since thursday since wednesday since this last week or so you pushed up to 32 almost 33 million shares on loan and you're still hugging the same exact range for over a month now my friends for over a month take this at face value real quick if we were going to die fall to the deepest trenches of hell in the stock price for blackberry short sellers would not only be on this like white on rice they would be continuously shorting it as it rises in price you don't really get any of that jazz, man. You're getting massive rips up to $12, and they're just sitting there like nothing's happening. Short sellers are stepping on each other's foots behind the scenes for BlackBerry. Some of them are returning. Some of them are borrowing shares as well. However, you can see at the end of the day that they're still 50-50 in the same exact range as they have been for a month after they doubled down at around $10.60. It's that simple. We flew to $20. Short sellers had a heyday, and they loaded up. All of them covered and returned until you got to 948. There was 18 million left on loan, and they doubled down when we pushed to $10.60 to 32.7 million. Today, we're at 33.5 million. Nothing has changed, and everything is looking beautiful. Before I head out, I want to bring the average age of the shares on loan real quick. This is currently at around 76.8 days. Let's take this at face value real quick and go back around 76, 77 days to see what current price the short sellers were loading up on shares on loan. All right, since it is 76.8, I'm going to simply round it up to 77. You can see 77 days prior to today is at that June 28th mark. So let's go back to June 28th and see what current price we were trading around that time. Oh my goodness, man. It is getting magnificent. It really is. This week is a huge week for us bulls. Because if we start to see some natural bullish activity, we could not only put massive pressure on the short sellers, we could start to force them to cover and return these shares. As you can see on the average age of the shares on loan, being around 76.8 days, 77 days, you go back to June 28th, and the current price for the highest point on that day was $12.86. The lowest point for that day, $12.04. So, take it at face value. These short sellers have been loading up on borrowed stock, borrowed shares, and the shares on loan at around $12.86. So this is a beautiful, magnificent thing. If we can push up back to $12 or even around there, start tickling that range, it's going to put a lot more pressure on the short sellers. They're going to be seeing more bullish days ahead, and then they're going to want to leave with whatever type of profits that they have. Theoretically, if the short sellers were at $12.80, $12.86 for the price range that they're at, if we're pushing up to $12, they're having to pay daily for this cost to borrow while they're also only 80 cents per share, theoretically, in the green, right? So with us seeing some natural bullish activity, it's not only putting pressure on the shorts, it's making them lose a lot of money in the process, and it's going to make them want to cover and return before it gets too bloody to the point where they're going to be down into some major losses. Regardless, hey... Everything is playing out beautiful, man. Put your feet up, dog. We got through a little bit of a red. Continue strong with that conviction because it's playing out beautifully. We're already back to around 1051. We're using it as support. It's just looking more bullish than it has been for a long time. Last week, we were feeling froggy, not going to lie, but it wasn't in a beautiful bullish trend quite yet. You ran up, you were in a rising wedge, you were in a rising wedge, so it was just screaming consolidation, another bearish rundown. We tested the conviction of the short sellers, they stayed, and they didn't cover, so guess what? They're testing our conviction now, they're expecting us to fold like paper, but it seems like more retailers are staying in the float and continuing to buy this dip. I mean, just look at the order book right now in this exact minute alone, and it doesn't matter even if we're up at 1050. 1049. We're still getting massive buy orders almost at the ask price just to meet the sell orders right here near the market price as well. So looking beautiful, looking amazing. The bullish trend we're actually on right now is a true bullish trend. It's not a rising wedge expecting bearish consolidation. It's a rundown, a beautiful pop. We're catching support early, which is strong. And as you can see, we're running back up to retest this resistance. So we're in a massive falling wedge, which is a bullish indication. We're in a massive double bottom, which is a bullish indication. We are catching our support early instead of running back down to this descending support. And that is extremely strong, looking bullish ahead. And we really just need a break over 1050 flat to start pushing up above these next ranges to around 11. It's a beautiful thing, man. I can't stress this enough. All it takes for you to see some more green days ahead is to stay true to that conviction and to not listen to any of the noise and just listen to yourself because who's to tell you what to do with your money, man. Uh, if I say this all the time, if somebody walked up to you and sold a pineapple to you for $5 and you wanted to sell it for 10, if somebody was offering $2, $3 for that pineapple, you wouldn't sell them jack squat. So don't do that with your shares as well. Just understand to put some lines around, put some uh, stuff around this little trend to kind of understand where we're going to go next. I have 1055 as that first resistance. It's actually our intraday resistance. But then after that, I don't really see us having any more trouble until we start testing the 1060, uh, 1058 range. What do I expect ahead? 
I expect a clean rip. I expect a push, maybe not this week, maybe next week, but I expect our next leg up. I mean, take it at face value. We got a massive rip from 948 to $12. We're running back down, catching support at around 1030, 1040, and it's looking like we're already getting that bullish sentiment back, the bullish momentum back. And then the order book is also showing massive buy orders, massive block trades being pushed in for the bullish side of things. So without any further ado, man, if you can like, share, subscribe, hit that bell as well. It'll help me out more than you can even imagine. It might help you out as well to get more people to hop into the stream, add to the buying pressure. Just see the massive growth potential for BlackBerry at such a cheap price. This is never financial advice, so don't listen to anybody but yourself. Whenever you're paying attention to these videos, pay attention to the TA, pay attention to the data. Anything other than that to me and the Shrew Gang is just noise. So, hey, y'all stay safe out there as well, man, so I can see y'all tomorrow. We have a full week of trading activity ahead, and I'm feeling froggy. The stock's looking froggy. It's looking amazing, man. Shrew Gang, I'll catch up boy as well. Peace out. Uh... Shrew Gang.